The challenge with digital advertising, and I guess I should do this so it's a little bit easier for you guys to see. The challenge with digital advertising is that in a centralized model, there are uh, from the advertiser to the agency to the buying exercise or from the publisher to the ad network and aggregator to the actual clearing of ad delivery, there are various different stages that take a percentage out of these transactions. And in this architecture, there's also a component of bidding on a per impression basis along with a um, IO based or an insertion order based ad buy approach. And this complication and complexity of all of these different actors makes for a very inefficient ad buy experience. And so fundamentally, what Facebook represents is a mechanism that uh, helps advertisers buy at scale and make it super, super simple. And that's why they have so much of the market share. Google does the same thing. But the reality is, outside of Facebook and Google, there's another 50% of the market. And so the implication of that is that there's all these companies that have to integrate together with various different technologies ranging from measurement to fraud to viewability. Uh, and if they don't do that, then they don't have access to be the clean inventory that's available to advertisers. When they do do that, the challenge is that there's a lot of different steps and pieces and transaction fees. And so for every dollar spent in digital advertising today, roughly four to six cents is actually applied to media itself, but typically about 20% of it is, ends up in the uh, actual hands of the publisher. And so our philosophical approach to exchange, and, and this approach has been really informed by our history as a leader in digital attribution of, of Kochava, is that advertisers should really have three choices. To buy media on Facebook, to buy media on Google, and then to buy media from everyone else but to have that process be a blockchain-backed, protocol-based framework so that everyone else is actually on a common ledger versus how it is today. And so what we've built is a ground-up blockchain. We've built our own protocol. We've built our own consensus engine. Uh, we've built our own peer-to-peer -peer framework, our own ledger, our own smart contract framework, and we've been doing this for the last two and a half years. We foresaw how smart contracts and blockchain could apply to digital advertising very early on, and we began prototyping because we're an existing profitable company in this space. And we thought we were uniquely positioned as a company to be able to facilitate this transition to this new space. And so instead of looking at the world of uh, various different components and parts, as you saw on the previous screen, our process is to manage the smart contract from the point at which discovery, matching, and negotiation protocols happen all the way through the life cycle of execution and delivery of the ads. So anyone with inventory can publish that inventory onto the blockchain, onto exchange, and anyone with demand, anyone who wants to buy ads, can browse and discover audiences that they may want to buy, and there is no intermediary. There's no hidden hand of Kochava that's taking a percentage, no hidden hand of Kochava that's identifying um, whether you can buy it or not, or whether you can sell it. So we've developed a number of really interesting, um, unique differentiated capabilities within our blockchain. I'm not gonna go into all the details of every one of them, but we have a white paper published. We've got actual code. We've um, made that code available uh, to select partners. We've got over 20 different partners that are working with us uh, from the supply side, from our, our history of working in this space. Um, but I think the, the most compelling uh, unique differentiator of, of exchange is our capacity to handle speed. So in digital advertising, you're dealing in a world of millions of transactions a second. Hey guys, can we lock it down a little bit? Be awesome. Uh, so in the context of being able to support millions of transactions a second, one of the challenges in, in blockchain, obviously, is these big backlogs with big transaction volumes. So whether it's Ethereum or it's Bitcoin, everyone knows that there are challenges with scale and specifically in having consensus at a transaction level. So what we did was we built our consensus engine, which is a combination of a sharded model against various different smart contracts, which are the contracts of buying and selling media, combined with a delegated proof of stake uh, consensus approach where different pods or different sectors of the consensus network are actually doing consensus on different shards of the chain. 
And the implication is that, of that is if I'm buying media and I buy media from 10 of you out here, each one of those scenarios is a unique smart contract. And our technology can already support today benchmarked uh, over 180,000 transactions per second with full consensus on a per smart contract basis. So what that means is if you have more inventory, if you have more ads to deliver than 180,000 per second as an individual pub, then you probably won't be able to scale with us. But if you have less than 180,000 impressions per second that you can deliver to a single advertiser, then you'll probably work just fine on our architecture. The reality is managing six and a half billion in ad spend today across all of our customers, none of them have a combination where a single advertiser is buying more than 180,000 impressions per second from a single publisher. And that's just because of the scale implications. So it's a very cool uh, implementation to both consensus and architecture to be able to achieve these objectives. Our testnet is gonna be out at end of June, beginning of July. We have, as I mentioned, over 20 different partners that are part of our on-exchange partner program. We've really focused on supply because if you don't have supply, buyers won't buy that inventory. Um, obviously, Coachava already has a lot of demand and that over six and a half billion in, in spend is being managed through our UI and our system. But these supply partners are not shabby partners that you know we tried to get a few uh, random companies who would please submit to agreeing to be part of this program. These are some of the leading uh, supply sources when you want to drive user acquisition and drive value. In Mobi, AirServe, uh, uh, AppLift, AppoDeal, Sharpboost. Sharpboost is one of the biggest gaming networks in the space on mobile. Uh, Keep, which is one of the uh, best brand associated uh, re reward survey advertising systems out there uh, based in New York. Uh, install, FeedMob, Zedge is a singular publisher. So we have over 350 million monthly active users represented in the group that we've already signed to date. And then finally, technology partners. Building a platform that is made up of a whole bunch of protocols. Remember, we're not building a ad network. We're not trying to represent that we can have inventory on our ad network and we try to sell it. This is a protocol. So we don't earn special transaction fees as a company who's authored this off of the backs of all these things. The whole idea of this is um, it's a completely disintermediated model. So this is a better way for these supply partners to get demand and for demand to find supply where their dollars actually put to work. The implication is you have to have a whole bunch of interesting technology partners that are also innovating on the same exact protocols because the premise is they have to build these blossoming tools that make it easier to monetize, to hedge, to um, create better yield, to have approaches for better fill, all the things that publishers care about, but in this new framework. We've got a fantastic team, as I mentioned, 130 employees. Um, we've got a leadership team within, within Coachava that's specifically focusing on exchange. Um, I think one of the things that is kind of a misnomer in this world of crypto and blockchain development is, um, hey, do you have any blockchain developers? Most people, I would say 90% of the people that say that are actually saying, do you have Solidity developers? Now, we're actually building our own protocol. We're building our own consensus engine. We have low-level, real-time, peer-to-peer engineers that have been working with us as a team for over six years because we've got this existing company. So in terms of capacity to deliver, I think you'll find a, a big difference in what Exchange represents versus a lot of other projects. We also have the who's who of ad tech uh, uh, associated individuals and executives who are part of our advisory group. So just ranging through folks like Paul Chang, who runs the advertising group within Ericsson, uh, who builds and sells hardware technology to carriers for their advertising side. Uh, folks like Mark Conan, who was the head of um, NextAge, which was the first mobile ad exchange uh, that really started to take off, bought by AOL. Perrin Johar, who's really one of the leading uh, figures of, of both the conference circuit within digital ads and agencies and uh, 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 media. Uh, folks like Andy Sippel, David Waxman, William Mugayar, who's uh, on the Ethereum Foundation, uh, was very interested in what we're building as a platform that has governance and uh, performance and execution. So a phenomenal group of people who uh, believe in this vision, see the progress that we've made already as a company, and um, 
if you're in the advertising space, either on the buy side or the sell side, or you're a technology vendor, we would love to have you involved and um, love to learn more. But thanks for, very much for listening.